Hi guys, my name is Omara and I am a second year medical student at the University of Nottingham and if you clicked on this video you're evidently looking to apply to medical school to hopefully one day become a doctor. In this video I'm going to be telling you what you can start doing already being in year 11 and year 12 to maximise your chances of getting into medical school. I have made a lot of step-by-step -step guides on getting into medical school, um, I'll link down the playlist which contains all of these videos down below or you'll see it come up somewhere here on the screen. As always make sure to like, subscribe and turn on post notifications and check out the timestamps in the description. Before we get into the video, I want to quickly recap the timeline of events leading up to you applying to medical school. The only thing that's remotely relevant to the application process that happens in year 11 is your GCSEs. Then if you move on to year 12, you'll be sitting your medical school entrance exams, which will take the form of a UCAT exam, which is a multiple choice online exam that you take at like a driving test centre or the BMAT exam, which you'll be doing if you want to apply to Oxbridge or London medical schools. If you haven't heard of the UCAT exam before, it's basically divided into five sections. So quantitative reasoning, which tests your ability to use simple maths to problem solve. Um, verbal reasoning, where basically you have to read long passages and answer comprehension questions in a short amount of time. Decision making, which involves logic puzzles and evaluating arguments. Abstract reasoning, which involves a lot of shapes and patterns and your situational judgment test, which is basically where you're presented with ethical dilemmas and you have to say how you tackle that ethical dilemma as a healthcare professional. You are marked from a minimum of 300 to a maximum of 900 in each section and given a score of 3,600 and a banding for the situational judgment segment. The BMAT exam, I didn't do the BMAT exam, but it involves sections on biology, chemistry and physics where you're tested to a GCSE slash A-level ability and a longer essay response at the end of the exam. By the end of year 12 you should start writing your personal statement so that when it comes to year 13 it's ready to go. In year 13 you'll have submitted your UCAT application by the 31st or earlier of October, so the end of October, uh, where you will have applied to four medical schools and your application or your UCAS application will include your UCAT or BMAT results, your predictions, teacher references and your personal statement. Then once your UCAS application goes off, you'll start receiving offers to be invited to interview from your medical schools between the end of the autumn term and throughout the spring term and during the same period you'll be going to interviews. Now depending if they like what they see at interview then you'll be given an offer for that medical school and the rest of year 13 is basically made up of working as hard as you can to get the grades that they ask of you which is actually a lot harder than people think. As you can probably tell the application process is extremely long and strenuous but if you use the valuable time you're given in year 11 and year 12 then make a start on your application and boost it up as much as possible so come year 13 you're in the best possible position to receive offers from your dream medical schools. But not all universities will use your personal statement in the application process, let alone even look at them. And I've left a link down below um, which gives a summary of how each of the medical schools in the UK use the personal statement. But they will form a large part of your answers that you'll be asked at an interview, because in an interview they will ask you about your motivation for medicine and they'll expect to hear proof of this and, you know, experiences you've had in communicating with people. So now that you are in year 11 or year 12, I suggest that you start tackling your medical school application in three ways. Supercurriculars, extracurriculars, and work and voluntary experience. Let's have a look at each of these, um, talk about what they mean, and how you can use them to your advantage to get into medical school. Your supercurriculars are activities that are academic, but they are beyond the scope of your A-level and not in any way really related to them. The reason application personnel care about this is because medicine is an academic subject. So they want to see that you're suited to this aspect of medicine and that you actually enjoy the content that medicine involves. Examples of supercurricular activities that you can get involved in are essay competitions, lectures held by universities, challenges and Olympiads, and student conferences. The way that I completed the supercurricular component is that I wrote three essays. Um, one of them was my EBQ which was called a complete review and analysis of acute myeloid leukemia and the other two essays were for school essay competitions. One of them was how neurobiological interventions can be used to prevent the onset of PTSD following trauma and the other one was on 
the organic synthesis of quinidine, which is an antiarrhythmic agent. I also gave a lecture to people at my school on how your socioeconomic status can affect how likely you are to get and die from acute myeloid leukemia, and I gave another presentation on the cardiac cycle to my biology class. I received gold in the Royal Biology Society Olympiad um, and copper in the Cambridge Chemistry challenge. Also, I attended a bunch of lectures held by universities, either online and in person. Now, it may seem like there are no super curricular activities that you can get involved in, for example, if your school simply don't have essay competition, but I promise you, if you simply write an essay of a considerable length, like over a thousand words, on a subject that you're interested in within the medical sciences, and give it to a teacher, that is something that's worthy enough to put on your personal statement, because you've taken out the time to do that. So that there is an example of how you can create these opportunities for yourself. Also, if you simply look online, there are plenty of student essay prize competitions that you can get involved in. Or something else you can do is that you can look up a research paper on a topic that interests you, for example, treatments for diabetes. And then perhaps you could look up a book about diabetes, non-fiction or even fiction. I don't know if it was a fictional book about someone's experience with diabetes. Um, and that there is a perfect storyline that you can put in your personal statement and talk about an interview. Say for example, um, having read a research paper on treatments in diabetes, it led me to want to investigate how it's like to live with diabetes and the quality of life you get. And so I read this book and that there paints a perfect picture to the examiner. Also, I would suggest that you check out FutureLearn. It's like an online uh, website where you can basically take like three month, six month courses in any topic, um, not just medicine or medical sciences in anything. You can do computing or stuff like that. Um, but this would be a perfect little course or like achievement that you can talk about in your personal statement and at interview. So now if we move on to extracurriculars, these aren't too important, but they do show to the person interviewing you or the person reading your personal statement that you're not all about medicine and that um, you know, you do take part in activities that can de-stress and recharge you to enable you to be resilient when medicine gets hard. Also, it shows them that you are a well-rounded person, that you have strengths outside the course. So I definitely suggest that you talk about sports, art, music, drama, if you've done it to like a level that's worth boasting about. Also, this is where I'd include any team building activities that you've done. For example, I included um, Duke of Edinburgh in this section. So now let's move on to work and voluntary experience. This is perhaps the most important section that will form part of your personal statement and that you'll speak about at interview. This section demonstrates to the admission personnel that you understand the qualities that a doctor needs to be a good healthcare professional and that you also understand the challenges that come with medicine. Because the last thing they want is to let you into medical school and then you start finding things difficult and then you think, whoa, this isn't for me and drop out. They want to let in people who are gonna graduate to become good doctors. Also, as all of these things do, it shows that you're committed to this career, to getting into medical school enough to seek out voluntary and work experiences. For me, this involves spending one week in a GP practice where I simply sat in in consultations, um, saw how the GP treated and diagnosed a variety of different patients. I sat with reception and in the back office, saw how like things ran. I also wanted for a year at a care home where I'd go in once a week and do arts and crafts with some of the elderly patients. I also created a mental health first aid scheme which was a peer-led scheme that trained approximately 400 girls at my school in mental health first aid. I also have been tutoring and volunteering in schools for about four years and I know this sounds like a lot of work and voluntary experience and it may be daunting to some of you guys but the reason I managed to gather so much of this experience is that whenever any single like email got sent around the school flyer on any volunteering opportunity I would say yes um, I remember I literally got involved in like the most silly like volunteering schemes at some points um, just because I was like okay I don't know what this may be useful for but I know it's gonna be useful for something so I understand that during COVID times, it will be difficult to go out there and get work and voluntary experience due to restrictions, but there are so many things that you can do. Also bear in mind, things will be opening up. So remember that as soon as things open again to start looking for work and voluntary experience. But in the meantime, Brighton and Sussex Medical School have released like an online package, which talks you through different specialties um, of medicine and gives you more of an insight into what medicine and being a doctor is like. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to check out that. I definitely suggest that you read books relating to either being a doctor and the challenges that come with that, being a patient. Um, for example, I'm sure so many of you have heard of This Is Going To Hurt, um, The Man Who Mistook His Wife For A Hat, 
One that you may not have heard of, which I actually read, is called The Citadel by AJ Cronin. Now, this book actually got recommended to me by an a &E doctor working at UCLH in London. And it is an incredible book. And believe me, I'm not saying this lightly. This is coming from a girl who's read two books in two years, no, three years. Um, but it's about a guy in early, tw early 20th century who, upon graduating and starting to practice medicine, is starting to see the severe health inequalities that exist. It's really interesting, really thought provoking. So I definitely recommend this book. I'd also suggest you reach out to doctors, uh, medical students that you see on Instagram, that you see on Twitter, and simply ask them about their experiences in their field. This can be something that you then talk about in your personal statement and power it in your interview and say, I've spoken to these doctors, I'm aware of these challenges, and this is how I plan to you know, combat them, etc. Lastly, it is really important to remember that you probably already have so much experience that you can use in your favour. It all depends on the wording. Um, for example, I was reading personal statements and actually one of the best examples of work and monetary experience weren't the ones that got to spend a month um, on the front lines watching surgery, which I'm not even sure how you achieve that at year 11. It was actually the person that said, I have an autistic sibling and this has been challenging but i've had to learn how to take care of him how to communicate with him and this was really impactful because i could tell it was genuine and that that person had really grown and developed from this so if you've ever had an encounter of someone in your family a friend or something that's something you can always talk about as well or any mentoring experience that you have remember it's all to do with how you word it and how you persuade the admissions personnel that this is a reason you should be in medical school and i talk about exactly how to word these experiences in my personal statement video definitely go check it out and a little disclaimer i wanted to add at the end the point of this whole application process of getting all this experience isn't to show the admissions people that you're the best doctor or that you're perfect it is to show that you want to grow that you want to develop because no one gets to medical school already being a perfect doctor. Like literally, I'm in my second year of medicine and I literally start shivering and shaking whenever I have to think about asking a patient, why have you come into the surgery today? Um, they simply want people who are up for the challenge. Um, so I'd bear this in mind. And honestly, even negative experiences you've had with teaching or mentoring people or communicating with people are great because you can then say how I plan to grow from this, how I plan to, you know, develop and rise to the challenge is X, Y, Z, um, because they want people who are reflective and can learn from their mistakes. So I hope this video hasn't made you dread the application process even further and it's given you ideas and ways that you can already start to get involved in in order to boost your application and make sure that you get into that dream medical school of yours. This process will definitely test your time managing skills but hopefully it will give you a taste of what medicine is actually like. And lastly, remember that any experience is good experience so get stuck in. Lastly, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications and I'll see you in the next one.